What is going on guys, it's Pout in the Shop. Uh, today I'm going to do a video on Vortec uh, head studs, screw in head studs. I call it Vortec, but it's really a lot of small block Chevys you can do do this too that have press in studs. Um, so let's talk about what press in studs are. So here's the difference uh, but press in stud versus a screw in stud. A press in stud is exactly what it sounds like. The stud is pressed into the head. This one I've already modified to show you, but typically on these, or normally I should say, the stud is actually pressed into the head and there's no threads that actually hold it in there. So this stud, all that holds it in is friction from being pressed in. So when you're starting to run uh, some beefier valve springs, some heavier valve springs uh, on your Vortec heads, uh, or because you're doing a cam upgrade or whatever, uh, there's a chance you're gonna, you could pull one of these, these rocker studs out of the head, which is not a good thing. Um, typically you're safe up until I say 275 uh, open pounds. Uh, so anything like LS6 springs, anything like that, you're doing the beehive springs on your Vortec head, you really should put um, the screw and studs in like this. Um, some guys have good luck with them. They'll run these, these press and studs uh, with higher spring rates than that and they never have an issue. But I've personally have seen these pull. So uh, some come out easier than others. Sometimes you gotta heat them to pull these out. Sometimes they just come out really easily. So it's not worth the risk in my opinion. Uh, the old school thing they used to do would be to pin, pin the studs uh, where, you, where you drill through and you, and you just kind of nick it to pin it in, in place. Uh, I think some guys used to weld them and stuff, which is not really too good with cast, but uh, the best thing, and honestly, it's not that hard to do uh, and not that expensive. In, in this video, I'll show you, you can just do it yourself at home, is to put in uh, screw in studs, just like this. They're incognito, so as you can see, when they're actually in the head, like this one, believe it or not, that is a screw in stud. You can't even tell. So it, it only, it doesn't really affect anything. You still got to use self aligning rocker arms because you don't have guide plates. Uh, if you really wanted to, you can go to a machine shop and they can machine these bosses down so you can run guide plates and you don't have to run self aligning rocker arms. But you know, that's going to cost you big bucks and chances are if you're already dealing with Vortec heads, you're like me and you like to build performance, uh, on a, you know, not so crazy budget all the time. So, um, with these, you got to maintain your self-aligning rocker arm, but it won't pull out of the head. So a big thing to remember uh, when doing these rocker studs is you got to make sure that they're sitting square. They can't be sitting cocked. You got to get them as close to square as the stock ones were, and that's where this uh, tool comes in, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, the first one's done. That's a finished product. As you can see, it looks very similar. H hard to even tell that we did anything. Um, this one is pulled and tapped. And then all the rest of these are all just press and studs. So what we're going to use today is the comp cams tool here. And I, some other manufacturers make it too, but I bought the comp cams one because I was hoping that it would be, uh, you know, a little bit better quality. Uh, but I don't use it exactly how uh, they intend for you to use it. I found a, kind of a different way and I found it better results the way I do it, uh, but it's just personal preference. So t normally it comes with uh, this little tool for aligning, but I, I don't do it like that because I found it was, it was just too sloppy. So I'll show you how I do it. So before you get started, uh, before you pull anything out, you want to make sure that you, you take your new tool here and you got to make sure that it actually slides over the studs. Okay, you got to make sure that this this hole uh, hold a hole is the same as your stud to stud hold a hole. So you should have no issues putting it on. Um, I I found uh, when I used to use this for pulling that I end up kind of deforming it and it would stop fitting on my studs. Um, so I had to actually drill it out and kind of refigure it. So I stopped using it for pulling studs and I'll show you what I use for that next. But just make sure before you get started, even if you have to uh, drill the one side out, the non-threaded side, a little bit because that's all this is is just two holes and then the one side has threads uh, for starting your tap but just make sure before you get started that it actually fits over your studs because that's crucial in getting everything lined up all right as far as other tools you're going to need uh, you're going to want two nine sixteenths wrenches um, half inch uh, ratchet a three eighths ratchet with a tap socket on it uh, a quarter inch 
12 point works well as a tap socket for this particular tap. That leads me to the next thing, a 7 16 tap course. You're gonna need a couple drill bits, a 23 64 drill bit. Uh, and I have tape on here as you can see, it's about an inch and a quarter down for depth. A chamfer uh, drill bit, just a regular drill bit, but I use it for chamfering. It's a 29 64. There's your comp cams tool, uh, a good drill. You gotta make sure you have a good drill. Some thread sealer Loctite 545 is what I normally use uh, to seal the threads of the new studs. Very important. Make sure you don't forget the thread sealer. All right, you're also gonna need to get yourself some 3 8 fine nuts. Um, don't use rocker stud nuts if they're like the locking style. I find they just gall up and give you issues. Just go and grab some regular um, 3 8 fine uh, nuts and these will make it way easier on your on you for when you're actually pulling the rocker studs out. Alright, so to actually pull the studs out, I do not use the comp cams tool. I use that just for lining up the tap. Um, what I do is I'll put a 3 8 washer to protect the head and then what I actually use are rocker ball studs. Uh, you could just get away with just stacking up washers and pulling them but I find with these hardened um, rocker studs like uh, these are, if you don't know what that is, it's the, the ball that comes in a rocker arm and I'm assuming if you're upgrading your Vortec heads you probably have a set of these lying around anyway that you're not going to use. So stack them up I usually do them like this. So start off with, yeah, I usually start with two. You don't get enough thread engagement if you start off with three. So put two on there. You're gonna need five in total. So you're gonna need five in total, but start off with two. And then when you wanna grab one of your uh, three, three eighths fine nuts. Put her on there. Snug it. Um, so at this point, if you don't have um, an impact gun, you can get away with just using uh, just using a, a half inch ratchet. Uh, in, normally, you don't have to heat anything up. Sometimes, if they're stubborn, I had to, had to heat the boss, like with the torch, the embossment here, to, to, to pull it out. But I honestly don't like using heat unless I have to. So, start with that. I'm just going to do it with a ratchet just for the demonstration. I usually use an impact, but so you just start tighten this down and you'll feel actually how easy they pull out considering how much pressure they're at. So if you're wondering how this works is all you're doing is using its own threads. You're pushing down on the nut, which is pushing down on the head at the washer and then pulling the stud up. So what you're going to do is just keep going. That should be good. You should be able to get another one in there. You always want to make sure that you have good engagement here uh, through the nut because you don't want to have a few threads and then strip it and then you're into some fun trying to get it out. So. Always make sure you have good engagement. There we go. Actually four, four did this one. Sometimes, oh maybe it only is four, maybe I just have five sitting here. <laughs> four, four in the washer, we'll pull it out. So there you go. Oh just, just barely, you can see we were just at the end. Just at the end. So four, maybe five is needed to pull it. I'll take a 29 64th drill bit. And you just want to put a little chamfer on the top of this. So you just kind of work the bit a little bit. See that nice little chamfer on there? That's all you want to do. All right, so after you chamfered it, you want to take your drill bit, your uh, 
2364 it's drill bit with your inch and a quarter tape on it and you're just going to put it down the hole and just make sure it can go all the way up until the tape make sure there's no uh, nothing that's going to bind the top up but this hole is basically the perfect size for the top already you just using the drill bit just to make sure there's nothing in there all right so you got your stud pulled you got your chamfer at the top and you made sure that your holes cleaned out you're going to leave this stud in, very important, and then you're going to take your comp cams tool and your tap, you're going to set it on there, and you're going to look down to make sure that it looks fairly square and looks fairly straight onto the hole. And then you're going to take your tap, again, make sure your threads, the threads in the comp cam piece are towards the, are towards the head, and then you're going to let the tap you're going to screw the tap in just until you feel resistance and the tap is tapered so it should sort of center it on for you and then you're going to take your 3 8 washer again the nut hold everything square and just snug that nut up alright so now that will hold your tap straight and then it will hold it flat against the top of the head. So now you can you can wind the tap back out. Should, everything should stay nice and square. This should be all nice and tight. Put a little tapping oil on your tap. Screw it back down. And you still gotta watch to make sure that your tap is there's a little bit of play, so make sure that your tap is going as straight as possible. And you'll find it starts to tap pretty easily. Make sure that it's not lifting up on the head, something's bind if it's something's binding, it should be going pretty easily. A few turns. Just like tapping anything else. Back it out. back it up. So this is usually when I'll stop, pull it out when the tap gets flush with the top of the tool. There you go. Now you can go ahead and remove the nut. tool so you'll have a good amount of threads put in there and you can see you can actually thread this in a little bit now I like to put it in and just make sure everything looks nice and square I mean that's a good sign but now you got to continue to tap this so you might have to clean off your tap. It's a little bit of brake clean usually. Clean off your tap. Reapply some more cutting oil. And now you can start to keep tapping without the guide in place because you have enough threads in there that it's going to center itself. So. So that's when I stop. Usually when the tap reaches the top of the bottom, like where the, you just bottom the, the tap out where it's flush, that's perfect for these studs. Just make sure you have whatever studs you're using, you have enough thread engagement. And then you just want to take a little bit of brake clean. Clean those threads out. You can feel how those new threads are. Those are perfect. Look really good. And then if you want, you can use your tool. To make sure that everything's nice and square. You're gonna need two of your 3 8 fine nuts, and we're gonna use these to lock the stud for torquing it in. 
But before we put this in, something that's really important is you got to put thread sealer, you got to put thread sealer on your lower threads because some of these threads go into the water jacket, some of them to the intake runners, so you can either have a vacuum leak sucking through the threads or a coolant leak into the top of your motor uh, from your head coming up the threads. So make sure you put thread sealer on. I use a Loctite 545. I've used just regular thread sealer, liquid thread sealer, but I've had good luck with the Loctite. I like Loctite stuff. I find this stuff works pretty good for this application. So I put lots on, as you can see. All right, and then your two nuts on top. You're gonna take two wrenches and you're gonna snug these two nuts as up as hard as you can. You'll lock them together and then you're gonna tighten them. Now you make sure that the actual stud is turning, not just the nuts. And then you're gonna grab your torque wrench. Hopefully you have a torque wrench. And what I usually do these two is 25 foot pounds. There's, some, there's different, people say different things, but I've always used 25 foot pounds with the Loctite thread sealer. Never had an issue on lots of sets. All right, so now that you got your stud finally, finally torqued in, all ready to go, this one is done. So then you can move on to your next stud, just like I did over here. I did this one, and then I went on to this one. But the reason why you don't want to pull that one out is you're going to repeat the same process with the new stud on the old stud when it comes to lining it up. So you're going to pull your next one out, just like I did here, and then you're going to slide your tool over and line your tap up just like we did before. So it's the same process. You're just using the new stud you put in to do the same thing you did with the old stud. And it's just that simple. You're just gonna keep going along, pulling one, using the one beside it to align it, and then repeating the process, flip the other way. And you'll go through and do all your, the rest of your, uh, the rest of your studs until you're done. And that's it, just make sure Again, make sure you use your Loctite and make sure you have them torqued and uh, you shouldn't have any issues. Uh, this is the best way I've found to do it. It keeps everything nice and square, nice and um, straight, just like they were from factory because you're using the original stud to line up the new one and then you're using the new stud that's lined up to the old one to line up the other side. So it works out really nice uh, with this tool and you're gonna have no issues with pulling Pulling these out, like uh, as soon as you get to the higher, the higher uh, lift springs, the beehive springs, the heavier springs, uh, where pulling a stud is, you know, becomes an issue. So, pretty slick, works good, incognito. You can't even tell you did anything, but it makes a huge improvement. So there you go, guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask down down at the bottom or shoot me an email. Uh, I love doing this stuff and I love helping people out. I've been getting a lot of emails lately from people. Um, with questions on Vortec heads and I love to answer it. So uh, please like and subscribe if you're not a subscriber uh, and I'm putting videos on Vortex stuff. People really seem to love this Vortex stuff as much as I do so I love I love putting out videos on it. Uh, thanks guys.